my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be breaking down a championship side for the first time in FC24. Of course, we will be breaking down ways that you can replicate and recreate Leicester City's Enzo Maresca tactics in the game FC24. Of course, not only will I be breaking down the 4-3-3 and how you can replicate those tactics, but as well as their attacking outlet, how they look to try and set out to try and break down the opposition's backline, their, their defensive structure and whatnot. It, as well so please stay tuned for that we will be going over quite a bit so starting off with the base instructions the formation it's a 4-3-3 holding of course there's one goalkeeper two sense backs two full backs one dm two central midfielders one striker and then of course two wingers So with the tactical vision being set to wing play i think that best suits what they're trying to replicate and recreate um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So of course they, they will look to try and work the ball into those wider regions and open up a bit more space for their attacking line to try and work into trying to exploit the opposition more times than not. As for the defense on the, the defensive style of things, the pressing off to possession loss best suits what they're trying to do as well. Of course they look to try and put the opposition under a load of stress and pressure, forcing them into multiple errors and mistakes, trying to have them play out from the back and pressing them aggressively. It does tend to turn the ball over quite a lot for the opposition. Um, or against the opposition, I should say. And that works more in your favor. So you will look to try and transition quite quickly into the attacking phase once that happens. And this does happen more times not when the, the forward line, as well as the fullbacks, they look to try and press that um, opposition back line and sometimes even in the midfield. And that does cause a high turnover rate. As for the team width, it is set to 45, which does allow you to clog those wide areas, preventing those crosses being whipped into the box. You do have fairly tall sense backs. I mean, Vestergaard himself is a flipping unit and a half. Um, very good in the air, very airily dominant. Your goalkeeper, however, not the, 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 the best at claiming those aerial balls all the time, but he can definitely do so nonetheless. As for the depth, however, it is set to 70. It, it will obviously get higher with the, the alternating game plan that you will obviously look to try and morph into as you settle into the game. But nonetheless, it is set to a, a mid to high line, depends on how you see it. But I would consider this, you know, on the verge of a, of a high line. Um, and it look, does look to try and pin the opposition back in their own, own half. But at the same time, it's not the highest of line. So you can't really be caught out on the, the break with a potential ball over the top all the time. Of course, if the opposition, they do have like a Dan James running in on goal or whatever, you might be able to, you know, be exploited. But nonetheless, I still think that this is a very solid um, structural depth to go with going forward. As for the offensive side of things now, the slow builder play, as well as the chance creation sets position, of course, this does help with their builder play going forward. They do look to try and maintain and keep the ball. I mean, they've had games where they've had 60 or 70% possession at times. They do look to try and maintain the ball as best as possible, look to try and break down the opposition, as well as with the slow builder being set to, you know, in play, it does allow for your sense backs to show for the ball, helping them build up from the back more effectively and then obviously progressing it forward as well as allowing your midfielders to be able to set up their structure um, when progressing the ball forward as well. As for the width, it is set to 60, which is on the lower side of what you're trying to do with wing play. But again, they don't look to try and, you know, have a, a crazy width. Everybody stretched all over the field. They look to try and keep it as compact as possible. Obviously, your wingers do look to try and hold a bit more of the width down each flank, but they do look to, you know, remain within touching distance of, of one another, especially in the central areas of the park, which is what you're trying to replicate here with the width being set to 60. As for players in the box, I have set it to um, seven, and that obviously does go up with the more offensive structure that you will be going to play with later. Um, and I will be going over that a bit later as well. But I've set it to seven, it more or less allows your attacking players as well as one of your midfielders, and sometimes maybe an extra midfielder as well to try and get into the box crowd the area and then maybe latch onto a cross or two. As for corners and free kicks, as for always, set to four. Starting off at the back with the goalkeeper Hermanson. Now, I did mention earlier, he's not the best with those crosses or aerial balls that are whipped into the box and you do rely on the likes of Vestergaard and Connor Cody and uh, Vout Faze as well. A bit more so than, than anything else, but I've gone with a balanced approach for his saving on crosses. He does look to try and claim the ball, but more times than not, punching and, and trying to just have that quick clearance opposed to, you know, claiming it, 
resetting and then progressing it forward but i will say this playing out from the back is essential for the system to work so i've gone with a sweeper keeper approach and of course you are playing a a borderline hard to mid block line um and you do need to keep that can make those runs outside of his area as for your two sense backs they're set to their base set of instructions and now the main change that we'll we'll see here is with the fullback so the likes of james justin he is going to have an attacking run set to balance so sometimes yes getting forward supporting the attack being involved a bit more but other times looking to stay back and just more or less trying to invert and like i say with the attacking game plan obviously he does invert into a sense back essentially but his run type will be set to inverted that's the main point of this left back role as for the likes of Pereira, of course, also the captain, he is set to join the attack and invert as well, trying to get him a bit more central, a bit more involved in the builder play um, in those middle areas of the park. And he does a very, very good job at that. So I will say this. Um, and then as well as both fullbacks are set to their uh, defensive position, set to stick to position. You don't really want them being too aggressive in and out of possession. Moving on into the midfield now. Uh, the likes of Harry Winks, of course. A shock signing, I will say. I, I did not expect him to sign for Leicester City, but he's done a very good job there. Being able to rotate the play, rotate the ball, make sure it's hopping on, popping around, um, consistently looking to rotate it as much as possible. Uh, very good with the, the quick diagonal passes to those wingers. Um, a, a good a good additional piece to this jigsaw puzzle, that's Leicester City. Um, so at the base of the midfield, we've got him set to having a balanced defensive approach for his defensive behavior. You don't really want him having that man marking approach or potentially having the, the cutouts and trying to intercept balls and whatnot. You just want him to man the, the, the back line, just, you know, have a good defensive prowess about him and not do too much. Um, and that goes with saying the attacking support is set to stay back while it's like not being too involved, too high up the field, but he can also be... Um, a vital piece in the offensive rotation of the, the the ball and working it into those better opportune spaces as for the interceptions i've gone with it set to normal and then as for the positioning freedom on the offensive side of things having him drop a bit deeper collect the ball and then progress it forward is essential and he can collect it off of either or center back or potentially even the goalkeeper the defensive position he is set to is just man the the central area in front of those two center backs creating a nice defensive layer and shield um, to try and make sure that they aren't exploited. Now onto our two number eights, of course, we've got the likes of Jewsbury Hall as well as Ndidi. So as for Jewsbury Hall, he will be a bit more of the attacking number eight of the two. He'll be set to get forward as well as having a balanced approach for the ability for, to allow him to get into the box in certain moments or potentially just staying on the edge of the area looking to try and rotate the ball with the likes of Winks as well as Ndidi. His interceptions is set to aggressive, looking to consistently hound the opposition's back line or potentially their midfield and try and cause turnovers or errors or something that can just disrupt their offensive structure going forward. And then as for the defensive positioning, it's set to cover the center as well as the positioning freedom on the offensive side of things, set to free room. You want at least one of your number eights, and I've gone with Jewsbury Hall, being able to pick out those little pockets of space you know, drawing out opposition players into those little half spaces and then opening up space in turn for other players to try and work with and work into. Now, onto the other number eight, the likes of Wilfred Ndidi, a bit more of a defensive structure to him, I will say that. But again, I think he's played in this position to try and, you know, be very aggressive, higher up the field, try and win that ball back nice and high up the field and then progress it and transition into that quick attack. So for the attacking support, I've gone with a balanced approach. Sometimes, yes, making that overlapping run of the striker, other times, looking just to hang back a bit more, link up a bit more with the likes of Harry Winks. The support on crosses is here to stay on the edge of the area, looking to be a, a vital piece in the rotational play. Aggressive interceptions, like I mentioned earlier, are set to be on, just like with Jewsbury Hall trying to cause errors and interceptions and disruptions in the opposition's central areas of the pitch. Cover the center is essential, as well as the ability to stick to his position and remain structurally sound. Now into the forward line, we'll start off with the right midfielder slash right winger. He is set to come back on defense, often looking to try and help support the likes of Pereira, who will be inverting a bit more into the midfield, but we will elaborate on that soon enough. The ability for both wings to stay wide is essential, holding a lot of the width in this team going forward, backwards, left, right. They're going to make sure that they're hugging those touch lines, opening up a bit more space for your striker, as well as your two number eights to try and work with. Onto the support runs, both your wingers will be set to trying to exploit the opposition backline by making those fast-paced runs in behind. 
As for the interceptions, it still sets to aggressive, creating a very much a hound dog approach with trying to make sure that they try and funnel the opposition more centrally into that net where more times than not the ball is turned over and then it can look to try and counter-attack on the, the error that's been made. As for the supports on crosses, I've gone with the balanced approach because yes, sometimes you do see the wingers in the box, but other times you see them hanging on the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate a bit more. And I think a bit more of a balanced approach does suit what Mareska wants the wingers to do. On to the likes of Mavidi. Now, he is set to come back on defense. And the only real change, as you'll see here, is the balance width. Obviously, looking to try and hug the touchline, yes. But he does look to try and come inside a little bit more and try and link up sometimes with the midfield and, and as well as the, the strike. In this case, it's Kalechi and Nacho, or it might be the likes of Jamie Vardy. So I've gone with balance width for that. But otherwise, the same set of instructions nonetheless. And speaking of Kalechi and Nacho, for the support runs, I've gone with him to stay central. So not looking to drift wide too much, manning that central area, looking to try and latch onto those crosses or cutback opportunities that will be fired into the box. And I will say this, for a possession-based system, I think target man or target player in this case, I think it best suits what a possession-based system needs and requires. You can't consistently have a player running in behind all the time and having no structural integrity up front. So having a, a big, strong physical player like Kelechi Inacho back into the opposition hold up play, link up a bit more with your two number eights or your wingers at times, having him bring other players into the attacking phase of, of you know, the game plan, I think that's more essential in making sure that you are maintaining and retaining the ball more times than not. As for the interceptions, I've gone with the set to aggressive looking to consistently try and press that back line as well as the goalkeeper at times. And then the defensive support is set to basic sometimes, whether it's Kalechi and Nacho or potentially even the likes of Jamie Vardy. Depending on how the systems are working, especially if you are playing a, a 4 2 3 1 system or against a 4 2 3 1 system or maybe even a 4 3 3, sometimes you do see the number nine just drop into the space and have a bit more of a link up approach to the game plan to try and counteract the the space and the players in and around the opposition um to try and obviously link up a bit more and a bit better also what this does is it does draw out players left right and center other times he will look to try and hang up the field a bit more be a bit more of the outlet ball not look to drop as deep and and look to be a bit more of a, a, a potential you know aggressor on the counter Now we move on to the offensive build-up play, of course, the 3-2-2-3, three, two, two, three. and it's obviously becoming a, a very fashionable trend these days to have an inverting fullback, have a back three system, have, you know, three attacking players still, um, and more or less Leicester City have, you know, done a very good job, and obviously Maresca was with Pep last season, and now he's got his his first job as as a as a coach, and he's learned a lot from Pep, and he's tried to mimic that and replicate that at Leicester City, especially with their build up structure. So, so with the formation, I've gone with a three four two one, and I've just changed a few you know positions, players, and and whatnot. So it's one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two DMs, two attacking midfielders, one striker, and then of course two wingers. Now with the tactical approach, of course, the tactical vision is still set to wing play. And the only real difference here is the depth is set to set to 10 plus. So it's set to 80 this time. You can obviously play around with it, whatever suits you. I think 80 is a good happy medium with what Leicester City try and replicate. And then the in terms of the players in the box, I've gone with another just one up set to eight, allowing them to make a bit more of a deeper run, throwing an extra man in there into the attacking third, of course, whether it's the likes of Dewsbury Hall or sometimes even the likes of Wilfred and Didi, just trying to get another body into that attacking third. But otherwise, everything else is still set to the same. Starting off at the back with the goalkeeper now, the likes of Hermansen, he's got the same set of instructions, no real changes to his approach or style of play. As well as Vestergaard, he's set to the base of instructions. But now the first real change we see is the likes of Justin, obviously playing as a left back in the balanced approach. He is now shifted more centrally into that left sided centre back. As well as Wout Faze, both of them have the same set of instructions. Both of them will be set to overlap, trying to support in those wider areas, as well as looking to try and cover those wider areas when in and out of possession. And I will say this, guys. Don't just chop and change between the attacking as well as the balanced approach, because... One, it, it confuses the players, and two, Leicester City, they'll still look to try and keep this formation for as long as they can, um, 
even when out of possession. So if they've got their offensive build up and they're playing through the lines and eventually they turn it over, they won't just look to immediately have Pereira drop deep and drop back into his right back position and everybody just changes back. They'll look to try and maintain that structure and then eventually naturally work their way back into their natural 4-3-3 formation and then try and repel the opposition. So don't just chop and change all the time. In the gameplay, I was doing that a little bit and it, it kind of did, you know, break the structure and the, the cohesion of the team and the units and the, the player relationships just ever so slightly. So my advice to you. Anyway, moving on into the midfield now, the likes of Pereira, of course, the inverted fullback. Um, set to cut pass lanes as well as drop between the defenders looking to try and show for the ball a bit more. Um, as well as, you know, looking to add just an, an extra defensive layer when required. The aggressive interception still sets beyond looking to try and, you know, be very aggressive with trying to stifle the opposition. And that also goes hand in hand with, you know, having the ability to try and counter press the opposition in this formation as well. Um, the ability for him to be the deep line playmaker, both him and Winx will also be able to drop deep, drop between the defenders at times, collect the ball and then progress it forward. And then also cover the center, not looking to drift too wide, looking to just to try and create that nice shield in front of that back three. As for the likes of Winx, he's got a very similar role to the role he had before, but this time looking to try and help Pereira with the interceptions of the potential passing lanes and trying to cut out and stifle the opposition. The attacking support is set to balance, so yes, he can progress the ball forward and have a, but a slightly higher position in certain moments, or having the ability to drop between the defenders, or having the ability to stay back when attacking. Aggressive inceptions though, they are set to be on just like with Pereira, as well as having the deep lying ability or the deep lying playmaker ability, sorry, I'm, it's, it's late at night, but the ability for him to be the deep lying playmaker, get on the ball, progress it forward, spray those long balls forward into that forward line trying to catch the opposition out as well as cover the center. Start be higher up now to our two number 10s both Dewsbury Hall and Ndidi. I must say I do not like Ndidi in this role but he does tend to take it up but a slightly deeper rate and I'll show you how we can replicate that but for now onto Dewsbury Hall. Um, a basic defensive support so not always looking to just to stay forward or get forward he can look to drop a bit deeper link up more with the the base of the midfield. Getting into the box though is essential, adding a nice body into that attacking third, trying to either get on the end of crosses or cutbacks, or maybe even trying to supply for somebody else in the box. The free roam role is still applied to him in this case, as well as the aggressive interceptions. So now onto the likes of Wilfred Ndidi in the other number 10 role. So he's here to come back on defense. Unlike the likes of Dewsbury Hall, he'll have a slightly deeper starting position, looking to try and also help out the likes of Winks and Pereira all the time looking to try and drop as deep as possible. The ability for him to stay on the edge of the area looking to try and rotate the ball into those better opportune areas is essential for him as well as the ability for him to now have a free roam role. You want both of your number 10s to try and occupy the little half spaces, the pockets of space in and around the opposition's defense. And what this does is it will either draw players out of position, opening up other spaces for your attackers to try and work into, or potentially it'll just allow them to operate in those half spaces and try and, you know, sway the game in your favor. As for the interceptions, it is still set to aggressive. Now, moving on to your wingers, both of them are set to the same set of instructions and there's a slight tweak to them, I will say this. So both of them will be told you need to come back and help out more times not, which is why I've gone with come back on defense. And the ability for both of them this time to stay wide, I did say for the balance approach, uh, Mavidi, he sometimes cuts inside with this formation, they will both be looking to hold the width more times than not down either flank. And then the, the major changes, the support runs, it's not set to getting behind anymore and trying to exploit the opposition's back line. You will be pressing very high up the field with this formation intact, and you don't always need them trying to exploit the opposition. You need them to be able to link up a bit more, have those little one-two interchanges, and then try and break into the back line, still giving them the option to have that getting behind approach, or potentially giving them the option to have a bit more of a come short approach, link up more with the midfield, or potentially be a target man, hold the ball up and link up as well. Um, and then of course, aggressive interceptions still set to be on for them and the ability to have them get into the box or potentially hang around the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate. As you can see here for the right wing, we've got him set to come back on defense, stay wide, having a balanced approach, aggressive interceptions, as well as a balanced approach for the crosses. And then finally, moving on to our striker, the likes of Kelechi and Nacho, and I will say this, Jamie Vardy, the same role. You don't really need to change too much. If anything, you'll have him play those one-two passes and making those runs in behind more often. But nonetheless, I don't think you need to change too much with it. As for 
Kelechi and Nacho in this system though, he is set to a balance width this time. So sometimes having the ability to drift, pulling out players out of position, or potentially maintaining a central role, linking up player a bit more, being the target man as as like the, the, the balanced approach, he's going to do the same role. Aggressive Inception still set to be on, as well as having the ability to sometimes drop a bit deeper, looking to occupy space at, at, at a deeper rate, or potentially hanging up the field. So there you have it, people. That is my version of Enzo Maresca's 4-3-3, as well as their attacking formation and how you can try and set up an attack with that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please hit that like button down below. I know you guys have also been asking like oh we need more championship teams can you do championship sides i would like michael Carrick. i'd like enzo mariska i'm getting there believe me i'm doing my research i'm ticking all the correct boxes and I, I i need to get things right before i can just you know make a video about it but guys i do appreciate all the support again please hit that like button down below subscribe if you are new we will be out with some fantastic content in the upcoming days of course um and of course the the target is 3k by 2k 24 so if you are not subscribed yet, please hit that big red button as well as the bell notification and even the thumbs up. That would be fan damn -tastic. But until the next time, I hope you guys have a damn great day. Yes, I'm talking to you specifically. Um, have a damn great day. I hope your team wins. Unless they're playing Manchester United, then I hope they lose. But have a damn great day. I'm out.